Okay, so today um, we are going to talk about the central limit theorem, also abbreviated as CLT. And so what I did was, for this report, I found some data on cohabitation on StatCrunch. Um, I was just looking for something uh, that would have a nice skew to it. And so the data looks at ages and lengths of time, oh, sorry, of individuals had cohabitated, right, or have cohabitated, all right? Uh, this is great data to look at because the length of time typically has a right skew to it, um, which is what we see here. Because obviously with time, um, you can't have negative values. Oh, let me scroll up just a little bit. You can't have negative values. Um, and so as time gets longer and longer and longer, you can see there's this tail here, right? And so the uh, mean uh, is actually being pulled. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me go back. Uh, the mean is actually being pulled over here toward the tail um, from the median and you can see that while the um, right tail sort of fits the normal model there's nothing in the left tail so this definitely has a strong right skew to it okay now I want you to notice the mean is 34 and the standard deviation is 33 okay and that's going to be important to remember as we go forward all right so now what does the central limit theorem say the central limit theorem generally states as my sample gets bigger and as I take more random samples and that random is really important the distribution of the means will have the properties of the normal model regardless of the population's distribution okay um, this is huge all right this means that I can use the normal model for sampling distributions even if the original data is skewed. So here I have a set of data that is strongly skewed to the right um, because of what it's measuring. Um, and if I take individual samples, I'm sorry, I keep scrolling this up and down. If I take individual samples, right, they're going to vary from 0 to almost 150, all right? And I'm going to see this skew in the individual values. The individual values could end up anywhere on here. But as, as my sample gets bigger and I take their mean, the mean of the values, what happens is um, the, the average of the five values pulls this variation toward the center. Okay? And so if I take a bunch of these random samples of a certain sample size, that distribution of the mean of those samples is going to be looking like the normal model. All right? And so note, the distribution of the means is simply called the sample distribution. Uh, if you're in my class, that means that we're talking about Chapter 17. So what I did was I took 50 random samples, right? So I have to take random samples, so I took 50 of them, of size 5 from the cohabitation data. So my sample size is 5, and the number of samples I took was 50. Okay? And so then you can see in the next column, I find all of the means. So I'm going to scroll down and show you what I did in the actual data. All right? So here was months of cohabitation. And so what I did was I took a sample of five. So this is my first sample of five numbers. Here's my second sample of five numbers. Here's my third sample of five numbers. And then what I did was I took the fifth, each of those and calculated the mean. So if you take 94, 23, 168, 24, and 54, you add them all up and divide by five, you get 72.6. So that's the mean of this particular sample all right and I did that for 50 times oh easy went too far so this is my last one at row 50 okay so I did that 50 times and now we're gonna look and see what effect that had all right um, I used stats crunch to speed it up but it was still a slow process so I will not repeat it here I basically had to use uh, 50 histograms that had the means and standard deviations in them and that was the fastest way to to do it um, and so the result oh, the result of that was the following distribution of those means so there are 
50 samples here and the means of those samples are recorded for in the frequencies. You'll notice it's still at zero, but the mean is a lot closer to the median. Okay, it's a lot closer. I can still see that right skew, right? It's still got a little bit of a right skew, but it's a lot less now because that mean and median are a lot closer together. Notice that the mean is 33 for the sample distribution, okay? The mean is 33 for the sample distribution. If I scroll up, remember it was 34 and a quarter for the old one. For the new one, it's 33.2. It's not that far off. But look at what happened to the standard deviation. My standard deviation was 33, right? Because I had this huge spread. But the variability has gone to 16.6 .6, or almost half as much variability for a sample size of 5, right? And so I don't reach out as far because those extreme values were pulled in by some of the lower values in the sample. All right. So to recap, notice three things have happened. Because I took the mean of five individuals instead of just a single value, the mean is still about the same, super close. There is less spread to the data, a much smaller standard deviation. And it seems more normal and less skewed. Still has some skew to it, um, but it is definitely more normal. Okay? So now, because our population is 149, I decided that the next approximate sample size, appropriate, I said approximate, the next appropriate sample size was 15, as this is approximately 10% of the population. Turns out when your sample sizes start to get above 10, that's not a good situation. Um, I, I will talk about it some more. Your book should talk about it some more. Um, but this is one of those nearly normal things that you want, a sample size that's not more than 10%. Uh, I still took 50 samples, okay, because I didn't want to mess up um, the central value theorem and what I was trying to do by taking more samples and it's a really tedious process. I didn't want to take more than 50 samples. Um, if I had been doing this in Excel I probably could have programmed it a little better and, and taken more samples um, but I was just doing this through StatCrunch. So. Uh, then I went through the process of calculating all the means for each sample and again I, I want to show you what I did so that you understand what happened. Um, let me Roll up, center this. Okay, so here's the months of cohabitation. And so what I did was now my sample size is 15. And so uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I should pause it. But uh, here's my sample of 15. So I sampled 130, 23, 0, basically 15 samples. And these are the 15 samples. And if you add up all of those cohabitation times and divide it by 15, you get a mean of 33. Okay, and then I have my second sample in here, right? And so if you add up those 15 values right there, then you get an average of 26, right? And so I did that 50 times, again, using the histogram function in um, StatCrunch to... Uh, do it very quickly for well kinda quickly for me okay and so what happened alright uh, the result is the following sampling distribution hey look at, look at my mean oh, crumbs did it again I clicked on it it's 32 and a half what was my original mean 34 and a quarter so it's very close okay it's off by just a little bit and that's because the um, sample the number of samples is 50. If I had taken 100, it would have been a lot closer. Um, and look what happened to the standard deviation. It is now 8.7. That's about half as much as this standard deviation and about a quarter as much as this standard deviation. So the amount of variability is getting a lot smaller, right? Even though um, my mean is staying the same. Look what happened to my data. My mean and my median are now exactly the same value. If I come down here, and I don't know if it'll do it or not. It, it does if you open the data up. If you open it up, it's within like five hundredths of one another, the mean and the median. 
they are exactly the same. They are right on top of each other. And it follows the normal model almost perfectly. Um, and so this is great. All right, so notice again. All right, so here's our notice again. The mean is still very close to the population mean. It's, it's only off by a couple percent. The spread is much smaller. It's about a quarter of what it was before. The distribution is almost perfectly normal now that we have a big enough sample size. Okay, we went to 15 instead of 5, which is about 10% of the population. So the sample size is certainly big enough. I just didn't take enough samples to make it perfectly normal. All right, so what have we learned from looking at this data and these histograms, right? What does this mean for the central limit theorem? Okay, I hope you learned that even if a population has non-normal data, like our cohabitation data, its sampling distribution does, right, it is normal given a large enough sample size and that criteria uh, for big enough is to come all right that's probably going to be in another video in your homework in a lecture uh, I hope that you learned that sampling distribution is centered at the same place the population is um, centered but has less variation okay and you will be able to see that in the formulas um, that you get from your book professor okay um, and if you learn these two things, then you understand the central limit theorem, and that makes us happy. Okay, so for a sampling distribution, the mean is still very close to the population mean, the variation is much, much smaller, and the distribution gets more and more normal as we take more and more samples and we have a big enough sample size um, with criteria for those things. Um, to come all right and so that's what the central limit theorem says it says that as my sample gets bigger and I take more of these random samples the distribution of the means will have properties of the normal model regardless of the population of the distribution in fact even if my distribution my original distribution is um, bimodal or uniform the uh, sampling distribution is going to keep getting closer and closer to normal um, the larger I make the samples and the lo the more number of samples I take all right um, and if you so if you learn those two things you do understand the central limit theorem and that makes us happy I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and subscribe to my YouTube channel